Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg again with Beyond MTHFR. And I just want to highlight one small concept that comes up over and over again for patients. It comes up for uh, practitioners also, even you know, high-level functional medicine doctors um, may be confused about this. And certainly supplement companies um, might be as well. And there's a lot of hype out there. And I just want to help dispel some of the confusion around the idea of B6. Uh, do you actually need the active form? Now, B6 isn't a methyl donor. There's no methylated form of B6, but B6 is critical for you know, uh, managing homocysteine levels, transsulfuration. It's also real important for pyrimidine synthesis, moving the folate, uh, the methyl groups around in the one carbon cycle. So B6 is critical for methylation. It's just not a methyl donor itself, but there's definitely a relationship between MTHFR and B6. So it's something we, in the methylation world we need to understand um, you know, what the, what's, the, what's the data show us. So the confusion comes around this idea that inside of our cells under a microscope in a cellular environment, B6 is phosphorylated. And what I mean is, in, is that it's in the P5P form. It's pyridoxine 5-phosphate when it's active in your cells. I, I agree. That's what the science shows. The question is, does the supplement need to be P5P? And that's a fair question because supplement companies um, and, and you know Facebook groups and social media, there's an idea out there that it has to be phosphorylated in order for it to be good for you or it's better than the pyridoxine HCL. And I'm going to suggest that's not true. And that's not just my opinion, it's what the research shows us. So humans get, obtain B6 from dietary and bacterial sources. Bacteria in our gut produce B vitamins, including B6, and the bacteria will produce different kinds. Some of it will be active, but it will also produce pyridoxine HCL. So here it says, in the diet, vitamin B6 compounds exist in the free pyridoxine HCL and phosphorylated forms. The latter which means the phosphorylated form is hydrolyzed to the free form prior to absorption. And there's three references that, that highlight that. So the takeaway here on this slide is simply this. Taking P5P is no better for you than taking pyridoxine HCL. All the P5P that you eat in your supplements will be converted to the, quote, inactive form, unquote, before your body absorbs it because your gut only absorbs right here the free form. So I hope that puts that idea into context for you. And if you have, you know, if you're curious about that as a practitioner or a, a student of functional medicine or a patient, you understand now that there's really no benefit to taking P5P. It's just a marketing concept. Again, nothing wrong with marketing, but let's look at the science. What does the science tell you? And this is, I've looked inside and out through 30 million references in PubMed. This is the best I can find. And it's pretty clear. P5P is no better than pyridoxine HCL. A couple other, idea, other ideas on B6, I, everywhere in your body that you have B6 activated, you have a lysine. So in all P5P dependent enzymes, right, in the body, the B6 is in P5P form, that's true. As I said, the cofactor is covalently bound to the amino group of a lysine. So lysine is where B6 connects and is active. If you have a lysine deficiency, you get problems. You get problems like hyperoxaluria, Okay, um, you know, again, people with kidney stones and oxalate problems benefit from higher doses of B6, but they also very often need lysine. So they can use the B6. If you do blood testing and your B6 is sky high, even though you don't supplement with very much, it means you have a bacterial overgrowth producing B6, as the research has shown, or it also means, in addition to that, you have a lysine deficiency and you just simply can't use your B6. It just builds up in the blood in an unusable way because you're actually deficient in lysine. There is one gene, I'm gonna jump back to this slide, the FOOT2 genetic marker means, and I made a video on this, uh, on the FOOT2 genes a while back, um, that basically says, yeah, if you have FOOT2 genetics, your body doesn't produce a lot of lysine in your gut. So people with FOOT2 genes, again, more likely to be lysine deficient and therefore have B6 issues and potentially methylation issues related to that. Lysine is effective for herpes virus. There's quite a bit of data if you go into PubMed and you type in lysine and herpes. 
at a high enough effective dose like this um, dose, they're giving you 1,000 milligrams three times a day, TID, for six months. It's an effective agent for reduction of recurrent severity and healing time of herpes. So could herpes and many of these viruses just be a nutritional deficiency? Could most disease, could most disease, cancers, heart disease, even autoimmune problems be a manifestation of nutritional deficiency? I think that's, there's a strong case for that. And that's what we work on in our practice. So I, I hope that, you know, again, B6, do you really need the active form? I hope this dispels some of your questions around that. I just want to keep this video short, but um, there's the data, guys. It's right here. It says that B6 compounds exist in the free and phosphorylated forms. The phosphorylated form is converted to the pyridoxine HCL form before we absorb it. That's it. P5P is no more effective than pyridoxine HCL. Hope that was informative for everybody. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later.